Alright, in this video I'm going to talk about just audio file labels, a little bit about the releases, um, just what these labels are all about. Um, audio file releases of music have been around for longer than I've actually been alive. Uh, Mobile Fidelity is the oldest type of audio file label that I can think of. Um, they began putting out their half speed mastered LPs back in 1977. My dad actually has a, I think it's a 77 reissue on MoFi of Abbey Road. Uh, unfortunately, his copy is pretty well scratched up. It was heavily used back in the day, so it's not the best. But uh, MoFi is known for recording <laughs> LPs using the half speed mastering process, which does take longer. Um, so that's why a lot of the major record labels did not use that process because it was a little complicated and caused problems. Um, most most of the big heavyweight labels, you know, uh, Elektra and Columbia, Sony, um, all those labels back in the day when they were making LPs, especially in the 80s, 70s and 80s, they were using recycled elements and that caused pops and cl clicks and ticks. Uh, on brand new records, they were using inferior uh, elements to make the records. Um, but these days, I always I try to go for audio file um, LPs simply because they sound better, they're made with more care, and they're usually all analog, uh, made with all analog equipment and analog tape. But uh, Mo Fidelity went bankrupt in 1999. Here's an example of some of their releases on Super Audio CD. These are pricey. Uh, some of these are. This one is a little pricey. And their Super Audio CDs were produced, you know, 5,000 or less uh, per release. Um, and Mo Fidelity back in 1901 re, re, re released Beatles out of 13 albums in a box set. I believe it's blue. Um, they used original mastering recordings, their original master recordings for each album, and that was the very, the first and only time that the Beatles master tapes ever left Abbey Road Studios. That's a very interesting tidbit there. Uh, but from 2007 to 2013, sales of vinyl went up, um, and just really, yeah, it took off and made Mobile Fidelity a, a lot of money. Here's some examples of their records. These are more recent reissues. Those are very nice, a nice thick cardboard. I've already showed the records themselves. This is um, another video, so I'm not gonna do that here. Great jazz titles. Um, but yeah, in 1999, Wolf went bankrupt and were bought by Music Direct Chicago. Um, and they run the, the business now. Uh, Mobile Fidelity, and they implemented their own technology into into the whole mastering process, which helped as well. Um, moving along to analog productions, here's an example of their one of their Super Audio CDs. I don't think I'll buy any of these because I already have all the great jazz titles on other formats or other Red Book CD formats. But their really uh, audio file reissues are nice too actually nicer than Mobile Fidelity, which is surprising for a company that uh, came up in 1992 and was just started by a guy by the name of Chad Kasim and out of Salinas, Kansas. Uh, just beautiful. I think this was their very first release, in fact. Um, their very first release um, on vinyl, I guess. I guess. I'm not sure. Um, but the, yeah, the company started in 1992, Analog Productions, and Chad Kasim actually sold uh, other uh, audio file records out of his apartment, then he moved into a house, and started, you know, people would come by with trailers, he'd offload them with records, you know, he had a house full of records. Um, he'd just sell them in his, you know, pajamas, underwear, you know, at the apartment, and but at the house, um, you know, I think... Neighbors were okay with it, and the home, uh, the uh, Kansas Housing, I guess, Association of his neighborhood at that time started noticing that, the, you know, 
there was a lot of traffic coming in, you know, people in their cars and those trailers coming in, dropping off stuff and taking stuff. Um, that he had to get a business. The city forced him to start his, you know, get his own warehouse, basically, you know. And that's how he has his own offices, warehouse, a recording studio. They cut all the master tapes there, and they also make, you know, the Super Audio CDs, uh, the digital downloads, all that. They cut the record there. It's all one contained great place. Um, some more examples. Just beautiful, beautiful artwork here. They come up with, you know, redo the pictures for these albums. Nice thick cardboard stock here. You get hype stickers, which I keep all those now. Most, uh, just about all the time. Especially with these releases, since they signify what they are, other than the uh, catalog numbers. But yeah, just, just amazing reissues here. You know, they cost more, but they're well worth your money. Trust me. <laughs> um, and they continue to put out releases. Another one, which is the sister company of Mole Fidelity, is DCC Compact Classics. They released albums on cassette, on CD, and Super Audio CD. Unfortunately, they're no longer around. They closed their doors back in 2001. Uh, same goes with classic records. I'll bring them up next. But these releases are great. They sound great. They're just regular CDs, um, but remastered with all analog master tapes. That's one example of that. I do have one more of these, but you know why to show more than one example? Press for time here too. And the artwork looks better as well. That's how I know. So a lot of this artwork as well. The audio file labels also take the time to redo the pictures or just get the best quality source of picture. Um, for you know, for a reissue like this, here's an example of a classic records um, reissue on 200 gram vinyl. This is Soul Station by Hank Mobley. You just have some great, you know, heavy hitters and jazz on this album. And this album just sounds great. It sounds better than the reissue that I have. From, it's the 1999 Rudy, Rudy Van Gelder reissue on CD, and that's just it sounds okay. Um, but yeah, this was put out in 2009. Actually, oh, I'm sorry, Classical Records closed their doors. Oh, not in 2001, maybe 2012, maybe? I'm not sure. I think that information was wrong. Because this came out in 2009, according to that seller. Maybe it was 1990. Yeah. Either way, you know, if you're into really into music and you really want the best possible sound out of an album... Pick up a Super Audio CD, or a record, or, you know, a high-quality cassette, if you still listen to those. I do every now and then. Um, but here's a 20-bit K2 Super Encoded Super Audio CD of Workin', put out by JVC and Prestige. Great, great reissue here. Um, sounds great. I mean, just, if you're really into music, you're into... Feeling the music better, maybe closing your eyes and transporting yourself to that, you know, seeing yourself in that studio with the band playing around you, whether it be jazz, rock, classical music. Um, yeah, you'll just know. You'll just, this is great. And one interesting fact about classic records is they were, they're were they known for their classical album reissues of, you know, uh, uh, Columbia, I think it's Columbia's Living Stereo uh, series. Uh, what other labels doing that now? Um, Analog Productions is putting those out now through the Quality Records plant. Those types, I think, is Columbia or one of the two. I can't. I can't remember what label put those out. Uh, RCA. I'm sorry. RCA's Living Stereo Classical Records series. Those are great. I'd love to track down an original some of those. Um, but yeah, even even the big labels put out audio file uh, quality music or just really high end uh, reissues maybe not up to the par of audio file editions but close so that really does it for this video guys sorry it's so short um, if you're into your music these releases you might want to pick up a few of them you know if, you, if you're on a budget especially and you can't afford to buy this stuff all the time I myself equip buying it it's very expensive so if you like videos like this, hit that subscribe button and I'll make more. I know you guys like them. Rate and comment. Thank you for watching and have a good one.